What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here, and today we are getting hyped for Halo Infinite Season 5, The Reckoning. With this announcement from 3 for 3 about this new wave of content being dropped in less than a week, all of Halo fans out there are sitting there thinking, is this going to be the day that Halo can be officially back? Is this an official dub for 3 for 3 to finally put on their mantle that they are dropping seasons on a regular basis compared to a lot of other games that are falling flat? Or is it just more hype than actual content? My job is to break down the upcoming storm and give you all the answers that you're looking for. Should you be excited for Halo Infinite Season 5? Let's find out. But before we do, if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. So let's start off with the new modes. Extraction basically is going to be the key mode that a lot of people have been excited for, for basically this entirety of the leaks and information that have been discussed since Halo Infinite was first released. It's basically a mix between King of the Hill and Headquarters from Call of Duty. Your ultimate goal is to plant the beacon in certain areas where both teams are basically competing for a certain spot. Once you plant the beacon, you're essentially gaining momentum that can hopefully gain you a point if you stay in the area for a certain amount of time. But you're also competing against other teams that are possibly trying to steal your momentum and try to gain that same point. So the big question I have is how much different is Extraction than to King of the Hill? But the fact that this is being added to Halo HCS is very interesting. And I'm wondering whether or not there's going to be kind of any sort of outrage or really kind of some confusion over the fact that this is pretty much King of the Hill. I'm wondering if this is a good game mode to add to more bigger maps because now it's more strategic in how you strategize who's going to control the area and whether or not spawns will be kind of depleted or maybe delayed for a certain amount of time, very similar to things like headquarters from Call of Duty. In addition to this, we're also getting firefight finally arriving to halo infinite but with a caveat because we all know that three for three never can just have perfectly great news you need to always add a little bit of spice to make people annoyed in some way now firefight if you don't know has been probably one of the most favored or just been sought after game modes in halo in its entire franchise it was introduced back in halo 3 odst what made most popular in Halo Reach. I think Halo Infinite's version of Firefight is going to slap, mainly because of the fact that you have an entirely new sandbox of characters and weapons that you can use to make the game feel very unique. I still think Halo Reach's Firefight is still top tier, but Halo 5's Firefight was actually pretty damn good because they included boss battles that were pretty intense. But we all know that Halo Infinite's boss battles are probably the best we've ever seen in any Halo game, so with any inclusion of those will definitely make this game mode feel a lot more better. Obviously being very similar to the classic firefight mode that we know, but adding now a caveat of it being a king of the hill firefight means that we have to move and navigate to different areas and stay in control of a certain spot to gain points to make the game keep going. Yes, I want this mode to drop during the, really the launch of season five, but the fact that we're getting it at all is already a plus. I can still rag on three for three that you make it mid season update rather it being a thing we get right in the beginning. But now let's jump to the maps. Now, when I look at the two maps, three for three is dropping. Both are going to be arena. And at first, I'll right off the bat, the only downside of this problem of having new maps added is you're not adding maps to game modes that are lacking them. Arena has a massive number of maps at this point. We wanna know a game mode that a lot of people love to play, but is kind of feeling lacking with the amount of maps that are available, Big Team Battle. Why don't you add another map like Oasis that is larger in scale that allows people to navigate using different vehicles. Or better yet, maybe add that Forge Big Team Battle playlist that a lot of people have been kind of rumored in thinking that's gonna drop. Even Forge Lord said, hey, it's on the way, but man, we really need that right now. The first map is gonna be Prism, which was basically leaked or kind of foreshadowed as being the famous Crystal Caves that a lot of Halo content creators have been discussing. I love the overall aesthetic, mainly it being kind of the place where the Covenant and the Banish have been mining needler bullets this entire time, where in certain spots you can actually shoot needle cores that can explode and basically injure or kill people. And based on the look of the map, it seems to be kind of like a medium sized map that is kind of closer to forest and its overall size. I think maps that have a story and that are unique are the best types of maps to play in. Because yeah, obviously playing in a map that's balanced and has some good mechanics or good areas to play in is fun, but a map telling a story based on what the overall outlook or aesthetic is makes it just 
feel fun to play in. I feel like this is probably going to be a good map for Slayer, for Extraction, for CTF, for Strongholds. I feel like it's a good balanced map based on the gameplay I've seen. The second map is going to be Forbidden, and this is kind of one of the ones that have given me a little bit of blue balls, mainly because a lot of people have been kind of foreshadowing that Forbidden was going to be a big team battle map, but it seems as though that this is going to be an arena map that is massive. Now, I honestly think that this is going to be a very interesting map, mainly because it's supposed to be kind of telling the story of a, a grounds of forerunner tech or artifacts left behind that make it feel very unique and ancient, very similar to Forest. Now, a lot of people might criticize the size of the map being to the levels of Behemoth or Launch Site, but to be honest, as long as the map is organized well, which it seems like it is, I wouldn't mind having this not just be an arena map, but maybe even possibly making this a squad battle map if it feels right. I'm wondering how this map is going to be in ranked when it finally does drop into it, because in a massive scale like this, it could be difficult to have a battle rifle that can snipe you across the map versus having more kind of, I guess you'd say close combat weapons be the main stake here. I think this could be a good map for Team Slayer for sure, and maybe a kind of land grab or strongholds, like possibly King of the Hill, but CTF seems kind of like it needs to be a little more symmetrical but we did kind of get a little bit of a gameplay from IGN for it so you got to see how it feels once you get it now we have to jump to the customization which I feel like is the most changed or the most unique aspect of this entire update now the battle pass system is gone really the most changes overall and I feel as if this caused a lot of fans to be confused where Halo content creators had to do an entire TED talk to explain what the hell's going on with Battle Pass? So essentially the way that the system works is that you're going to get a standard Battle Pass like we've always done that will cost roughly around a thousand credits. Now these a thousand credits are going to go towards building toward a 50 tiered Battle Pass. Now I know what you're thinking, isn't it normally a hundred? And you're right, but there's one thing that you need to keep in mind when it comes to 3 for 3 and how they set up their battle passes from the start of launch all the way till now. Most of the time they used to always try to hide behind the idea that they're giving you a hundred different unlockable. But in reality, what they're doing is they're breaking apart things like shoulder pads or colors on different weapons and armor pieces by not making it cross core, meaning that every individual color or emblem is unlocked separately along that battle pass. But what they did in this one is they combined all of the things to be in one box, meaning that if you unlock one color for your armor, you get it for all the different armor cores and for the weapon. Rather it being you get only one shoulder piece and then you get the other shoulder piece, the second tier, it's now you're getting both at the same time. But one thing I think is pretty solid about the Battle Pass itself is that in the first 20 tiers are all going to be free content, meaning that you could grind for the amount of time it takes to unlock the 23 tiers. And if you decide that you want to keep playing Halo, you can always pay the 1,000 credits and earn the rest of it if you want to continue playing. If not, you want to spend a single dime on the Battle Pass, you can still earn the 20 tier. But I think what's beneficial about buying the Battle Pass is that you're still getting 1,000 credits overall by completing the Battle Pass anyway. Now, when it comes to the operations, which I feel as if are the most unique additions to Halo Infinite and the way in which these Battle Passes have been formulated, instead of getting Fracture events, which have always been kind of like a one to two week event that you unlock free content for a specific core are now getting operations which are going to consist of basically hitting around that four to six weeks and we're going to earn up to possibly 20 different tiers for every single operation set now i think the most confusing aspect of this entire system is how they regulate the amount of money that you might want to invest into the system where some people were saying to me that damn marsman are you do we have to buy this operations for five dollars a piece and what the hell are they talking about 2,000 credits for? I don't know why 3 for 3 made the system the way they did, especially when it comes to having to pay money to keep these things unlockable for the entire duration. But basically what they're trying to tell you is that by playing these operations during the time in which they are opened, you can earn 20 free tiers by just playing the game and doing challenges. But let's just say you are somebody that plays Halo for a little bit, then jumps to a different game, then jumps back maybe in a few weeks span, you would have to pay 500 coins, which is equivalent to $5 to keep them unlockable for a longer duration. And if you want to be sweaty and just buy the entire 20 tiers without putting it in any work, you can pay $20 or 2000 credits to just earn the entire pass without playing a single game. Don't be the guy that pays 2,000 credits just to unlock everything instantly when all you need to do is probably play 
maybe five to ten games of Halo and earn the entire operations pack in a very quick span. And over the time period for season five, we're going to get two different operations. The Combined Arms, which is in November 14th, and Winter Contingency 3, which is in December 19th. The most unique of the two different operations is probably going to be Combined Arms, mainly because of the fact that 3 for 3 used a photo that looked like Spartans were working alongside elites and jackals and with using the similar weaponry and having similar armor sets so it seems as though they might be adding in some alien based armors not necessarily saying they're adding in elites but they might be adding in armors that replicate what these aliens look like in the types of armors that they have which is still going to be pretty solid but i can already hear all the halo fans out there yelling and screaming as why don't we have elites in halo and i really don't know the exact answer why because it kind of ties right into the next part of this customization which is the flood customization which in my opinion is probably the best aspect that is being added to this because when you look at the flood customizations that have been added for season five they are extremely unique they are a mixture of not just armor sets but also armor effects meaning that whatever armor you have currently on your spartan they might actually translate and change the way your spartan looks because you're using flood based armors and the different types of looks they have for your spartan are outrageously insane if you are a fan of the flood and you want to look absolutely nuts you should definitely check out the different armor pieces they have for the flood customizations that are dropping for season five because a lot of fans were being hyped seeing them finally drop it just means that the effects are endless and you can do so much more with what 3 for 3 actually thinks they can do. Like, they can handle a lot more here. And lastly, I feel like the best aspect of this customization is that the fact that we're finally getting cross-core armors. Now, we've already kind of seen how visors have been added over a period of time, but now we're getting helmets. And they didn't really clarify how many helmets are being cross-core or added or adjusted to be that. If they were able to make adjustments to a lot of helmets that were currently in the game, that is already a major plus. I know that they made it a goal of theirs to, to continually add cross-core armors, whether it's being helmets or shoulder pads or, or whatever it may be, to the game. But if you can get this done on a quickened pace or a facet, then you're going to get so many more fans happier that they can customize their Spartan to the highest degree. Because let's be real, there's a lot of information that was shown or leaked in these trailers showing off the Mark VI armor kit that makes everyone look like the Master Chief. But what is this? Are we getting the Mark V armor core now? I know that it was leaked and I know that everyone was talking about it. But seeing it in an actual trailer do not make me regret getting excited for a Mark V armor set if you're just going to give me a armor kit. Allow us to be able to have a core that is based in the original Halo CE or in Halo Infinite or any of the Halo games and give us customizations to go along with them. I'm still holding out hope for Halo 3's Hibusa helmet to be re-entered into the fray because it was one of the best helmets and best armor pieces out there. So... 3 for 3, if you're listening, get on that. But probably the last and most impactful addition for this season is Forge. Now, Forge has been in part of Halo Infinite since the winter update. And I said this a long time ago. I don't want to pat myself on the back, but Forge has done its purpose. I said it back then. I'll say it again. Forge resurrected this game because it allowed for the fans to create maps and modes that made this game feel way more fun. If you don't believe me, look at the squad playlist why is it that all these fans can make these old halo maps into forge and when they put them right into one playlist to play and it's one of the most popular playlists that people are jumping onto for halo infinite because it is forge created it's the fans that recreated these maps frame by frame so forge is now getting more things that you can do being added into forge is this new ai that you can now use enemies from the campaign and other types of missions to be added into different maps that you create now we all know the ultimate goal here is that they want the fans to make firefight maps which i already know that once they do drop firefight we're going to get some pretty amazing levels to play on but i can't wait to see how these experienced forgers can create some unique experiences and even create straight up like campaigns if they wanted to you can literally recreate warzone if you wanted i saw some people do it with some makeshift characters and makeshift pieces but now you're actually getting forgeable AI, you can literally recreate Warzone and put that into Halo Infinite. The possibilities are endless with adding forgeable AI. And now we get to see how much Forge is capable of with now getting added new pieces, more flexible kind of areas that you can play in. And now we're getting forgeable AI to make just things more unique. So it just feels 
right. So overall, in my preview, I'm thinking to myself, damn, Season 5 is massive. You're getting new maps, new modes, forges being updated, firefights arriving. My head's about to explode. Now, obviously, some areas of concern are the fact that we haven't gotten a new big team battle map in months. Firefight is releasing mid-season 5 rather than the start, and not having a full 100-tiered battle pass is definitely annoying to see. But when I compare the levels of content being added to Season 5 compared to anything we got in Year 1, this is mind-blowing. I feel as if this is game in this the way that 3 for 3 is handling infinite from the second year compared to the first year is in two completely different dimensions and how they want to handle the game going forward. And it's not just Halo. If you want to compare Halo Infinite to other multiplayer games, there are people actually saying that Halo Infinite is doing a better job in a live service than they are. And I'm looking at you, Overwatch. Season 5 is massive in scale, and I can tell you if it drops with no hiccups, this is a massive W. I'd say if you haven't jumped in the Halo since year one, you might want to consider jumping back now because the past three seasons that we've seen from this game have been phenomenal. Halo Infinite is feeling like the actual game that we've always wanted, and Season 5 marks that amazing point that Halo fans have been itching to see with the inclusion of things like Firefight and kind of a lot more customizations and modes that we've been looking for. And with content being consistent, with real leadership at the helm, it seems as if we actually have a solid plan. Dare I say that Halo is back? We won't know until Halo Season 5 officially drops and you know your boy will be there when it finally does. Are you excited for Halo Infinite Season 5? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.